Problem 7. The, we want the indefinite integral of 1 divided by the square root of x times e to the square root of x dx. And we look at this problem, it's not quite clear how I can get rid of this square root. I don't have an obvious antiderivative, but there is a little trick to this. And what I can see is if I look at this sort of innermost function, this e to the square root, the square root of x right here, okay? I look and see right here, if I let u equal the square root of x here, but leave this one in the problem, this will cancel out when I replace dx. And we'll see that happen shortly. So let me actually go through and do that. So let's start and let u equal the square root of x. Okay, and I'm going to use that to replace this, because so I have e to the u or e to the negative u, I can take that integral pretty easily. But I still have a dx here, so let's take the derivative and find out what dx is. So this means that du dx is equal to 1 divided by 2 root x. Now, I've memorized the derivative of a square root, but if you don't have that memorized, it's this easy. The square root of x is just x to the 1 half. The derivative of x to the 1 half is a power function, so this means that the derivative with respect to x of x to the 1 half um, we will bring the one half to the front. We'll subtract one from here. So one half minus one gives me negative one half. So I get x to the negative half power. A negative exponent can go down to the denominator. So that's one divided by two x to the one half and x to the one half is the square root of x. So we get there in the end. It's, it's not that difficult. It might be useful to memorize that because it shows up so often. So now, I'm going to solve this for dx so I can replace that right here. So multiply both sides by dx and I'll get that du is equal to dx divided by two root x and multiply both sides by 2 root x to get dx by itself. So we'll get that dx is equal to du times 2 root x. Let me, let me switch that order around a little bit. Let's do 2 root x times du. No difference there, it's just when I plug it in, it'll be a little bit clearer. We like seeing all of the function in front of the dx or du when we put it in, so I'll write it this way. Okay, so now I can substitute stuff in. I'm going to replace this square root with my u. I'm going to leave this one in here. It's going to go away soon because of this square root over here, and we'll um, reduce this down. So we're going to take that and say that integral is going to be equal to the indefinite integral of 1 divided by the square root of x times e to the u, I replaced this square root with u, and that's what we define it as, multiplied by, I'm going to replace the dx with 2 root x du, so 2 root x du. And we see, since I left this square root in, I can now cancel out these two square roots of x. And I also see I have this constant multiple of 2. I could put as 2 over e to the u, but I never like leaving constants in integrals. I always like bringing them out to the front. It makes it a little bit easier for me. So this will be equal to 2 times the indefinite integral of 1 divided by e to the u du. And we might not see it here, but 1 divided by e to the u is e to the negative u power. So let's do that. 2 times the integral of e to the negative u du. 
and this is a pretty easy integral to solve. Um, if we have e to the kx, let me write this rule down, it's worth noting. Anytime I have the indefinite integral of e to the kx, okay, some constant times what we're taking the integral over, that's going to be e to the kx divided by k. We're going to use that rule over here. If you don't know this rule, you could maybe let w equal negative u. You'll get the same thing in the end. But let's just use this rule. So in this case, k is this negative 1 in front of the u. So I still have my 2. I still have e to the negative u divided by negative 1. And when I take this indefinite integral, I add an arbitrary constant. 2 times an arbitrary constant is another arbitrary constant, so I have plus c. And now a few things to tidy up. First thing, 2 divided by negative 1. That's negative 2. Second thing, e to the negative u. Let's put that as 1 divided by e to the u. Okay, and now the last part of this, I started off with x's in this green right here, and then I changed to u's to be able to solve the problem. However, my problem was in x's. I don't want my answer in u's, so let's change back to x. And I can do that by saying, okay, whenever I see a u, I can put the square root of x back in. So I know this has to equal, and I'm going to bring this 2 times 1, I bring this up into the numerator, so I have negative 2 divided by e to the square root of x, by replacing that u with the square root of x, plus c, and this all means that my answer is c.